continuing to work his way back from injury. They think he's about a week away from being able to get back into the rotation. So here is Brady Lauk. And we are just about underway. Game two between Florida State and Miami pounding the inside corner for a strike. Yeah, good start for Lauk. Again, like we talked about, I talked about beginning of the game, that fastball command is going to be key for him. Second pitch back to the heater. Command of that pitch has been the reason that Lauk has been inserted into the rotation and earned the trust of the Florida State staff. Look at Jacoby Long, though. 307. He's batting over 400 in ACC play. Took over the leadoff spot last weekend against Duke and hasn't let up a powerful home run last night in the eighth to make things interesting here for the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, a team again, 16 and 17 on the year and 6 and 10 in the ACC. 1-2 pitch, slow roller, second. Ferro, couple pumps, and one away. Not a bad start there, Chris, for the Rook on the hill. Yeah, good start. Fastballs really just attacking the hitter, keeping the ball down. And that's what you're going to see from him. If he can keep the ball down, you're going to see a lot of ground balls today. Just four pitches to retire. First batter working on their communication. Device is there in the wristwatch to try and receive balls and strikes, excuse me, uh, pitch calls. That's something pretty new in the game over the last couple of years, Chris. It has modernized the game of baseball. Yeah, it takes away a little bit of signs and things like that. I know it makes it easier for a pitcher not to have to think. First pitch. That's Edgardo Viega. Smith will watch it drift out of play. 0-1 no here to Villegas. Edgardo, nephew of former Royals All-Star, Jose Rosado. And playing his high school ball at Carlos Beltran Academy. Look at the numbers, 266. Two homers, 18 RBIs. Villegas 0 for 3 last night. That one high and in, 1-1. One and one. Alex, after a loss, what's the mindset for a lineup to come back out the next day? It's all about a bounce back and a short memory. Miami only lost by one, and that's what we got to talk to Coach about before the game, which is, hey, all these games that your record isn't reflective of the quality games that you guys are putting together. You're within a swing away, and, you know, what is that like, and what's the talk in the dugout? One-two pitch, misses the outside corner. Home plate umpire, Brian Miller. Here on this Friday afternoon, it's a Thursday, a Friday, Saturday affair between the Knolls and the Canes. There's Brian. Rips right at Ferro. Two up, two down. And the freshman has gotten through it with two. With two outs on nine pitches. Saw yesterday, Miami really early on against Arnold had some hard hit balls and really battled in there. Alex, they're looking to attack the fastball if they can early in counts. There's a strike. He didn't that time. You know what they say, Ari, you never want to miss the fastball. So, Chris, I, I know you're familiar with that, right? The heater that you throw early in the count, I want to jump all over it. So. Yeah, and, you know, and as a pitcher, you know, it's all about location with that heater. And you saw that first one right there that lopped through right there was down. Probably was a ball, but he got the call. And if you are going to throw one around the middle, you want it down there because they hit it, they hit it and pound it in the ground. The ones down low don't go very far, huh? That's right. <laughs> Daniel Cuvet at the dish. Outstanding freshman from Fort Lauderdale, Broward County. That's what he does. He rips base hits. Cuvet came into the weekend third amongst NCAA freshmen and hits on the year and fourth in OPS. He adds the tally there. Good looking kid from Elite Squad Baseball Academy. Cuvet does a great job right here. Just taking this pitch left a little bit too up in the zone there. Thigh high, you know that you can get barrel down on that one. So good execution on the pitch by Kube. Yeah, Lauk's thrown two breaking balls so far, and both of them not having the bite that he's looking for, and both have been hit really hard. That one a little bit better right there. Especially when you're down in the count. 0 oh, 2, right? Yeah. You're looking for something out of the zone, or at least that's what you're expecting in the box. But when you leave it thigh high, it's almost like a little present. Yeah, those hitter, hitters dream, right? 0-1 comes in, 0-2 to Dorian Gonzalez. Gonzalez has played really all over the fields for Miami throughout his career. 
Lee Jr., hometown kid. His dad played with Miami from 94 to 96. One of J.D. Arteaga's best friends, the Hauser of Faithful. One of that cult. Didn't get it. You look again. Um, that's a strike all day at any level. That's a great pitch by Lau. I think he missed that one. So you have Gonzalez hanging in there. 92 on the gun from Lauk is fouled away. Kind of similar to Arnold's start last night. Lauk is just pounding the zone. I like to see how efficient he's being and getting ahead in every batter so far. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's a little bit different, too, that you see they had a little bit better scouting report because you had more to scout on. Ooh, good piece of hitting right here, though. Ferrer trying to cut it off, slides to keep it in front. They're going to wave home the runner. Going to be a play at the plate. Miami trying to strike first. They do. Sliding in safely is Cuvay aggressive. And the Canes jump out with a two-out knock here off the bat of Dorian Gonzalez. Gonzalez with a nice opposite field hit here all the way down the left field line. Ferrer comes up with it. I thought he was going to have a good play at the plate. He's chasing it, covering a lot of ground. Does a good job keeping it in front, but that slight bobble right there allows Cuvay to come in and score easily. What I want to see, too, is Holbrook try to cut, cut that ball off. As soon as he knows he doesn't have a play at the plate, you got to go and look at the runner. Gonzalez was right there in no man's land. Throw into third. Oh, the slide came up well short. What was Gonzalez doing? As for that arm shot, that slider, you can probably see him throw that a lot to, our, to the left-handed hitters for the Knolls. And so Max Williams steps in. And oh, first pitch, wore it, and he will take first. If you're going to wear one, that's where you want to wear it, where all the muscle is. Still doesn't feel good, though. 94 <laughs> like on the hip, yeah, no thank you. <laughs> Williams is just going to wear it, not, and not anywhere you can go either. It's not no. like you can really turn away from that one. It's coming how, right at you. How does that feel for a hitter? Um, how long it, does it that hurts? take? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> how long does it take to recover? I mean, definitely, uh, I feel like a couple minutes, right? It's almost like a stinger. That's right. De right dead right leg, yeah. Yeah, man. Williams, Smith, Tibbs, Ferrer, Dinges, Holbrook gets the start at catcher. Cantu, Ferrell, Lodis, no changes in the bottom of the order for Florida State. They will check down to first. Mike Jarbo, the umpire there today. Here's Smith. 1-0 count coming from Schlesinger. Catches the strike zone. And he saw a first pitch hit by pitch. There, uh, Chris, what are the nerves like pitching in a rivalry game like this? I'll tell you what, it, it is funny because typically I, I love this moment. For some reason, for me against Miami, it was a little bit different. So the nerves are even a little bit stronger, I guess you can say, and they're kind of spinning a little bit more. So first pitch, you're in a term that I could say on tear. You're you're jacked up a little bit, and so he probably just let that ball kind of get away from him, run on him, arm side into Williams, but he'll start to kind of settle in here in the next batter or two. Swing and a miss from Smith. That arm slot tough from Schlesinger. Smith working his way slowly into the upper half of mock first rounds for the 24 MLB draft. You see the numbers robust. Named the top pro prospect in the Cape Cod League over the summer. And it's a lot to dream on. You look at the size, the physique, the average has now climbed to meet the power. And he has really cut down on chasing pitches and the strikeout rate is down. Hit hard, that's what he does. Into the corner, in right field, it's extra bases. They're gonna wave Max Williams home. Nope, they're throwing on. He misses the stop sign and he's gonna be nailed. Wow, miscommunication between Max Williams and Florida State's third base coach, Ty McGahee. And Miami guns down the would-be tying run here in the bottom of the first. Yeah, that's tough right here. Great piece of hitting by Cam Smith, though. Line drive down the right field line. Does exactly what you do on a pitch outside, but you're right, Max Williams just runs right through the stop sign. Ty McGahee and is hosed at the plate. And that's so tough. That's kind of that situational awareness. We were just talking about base running. 
with coach before the game and how important it is to just really hone in on that aspect every single day. And right there, you look at the situation, Cam Smith with a double down the line. You've got runners on second and third, nobody out with your number three hitter up. That's exactly the situation you want to be in. Can't run yourself out of those opportunities. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's one of those situations, and you know this better, though, Alex, when you're running as a base runner. I mean, I was trying to keep people off the bases, but picking up your coach. It looks like he picks him up and he's waving him, but he didn't stay on him. And he came down the line to give him more room and held the stop sign. And Max Williams just had his head down and just never picked it up. Let me ask this to Alex as we look at it replay. Travis Wilson, you're your coach. When do you read the stop? from the go sign. Well, here's the thing. If coach is having to tell you and that's your sole decision, you're already blown up. No matter what the decision is, you as a base runner, it is on you. You've got to keep your head on a swivel right there. If I'm Max Williams, I'm running the bases. I'm constantly searching for the ball. I know where the ball was hit. I'm constantly looking. So if I'm having to only rely on coach, I'm already out probably. And right there, if anything, it's kind of just that emergency red light. Good stuff there. Can we give some credit to the Costello, Gonzalez to Scanlon tandem there. They yeah. had to execute, and Miami absolutely hosed Florida State there at the plate. Oh, it was a great relay. And, 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 you know, and Alex is right, though, too, with this on the base run aspect of it. Worst case scenario, if he holds up, okay, you're still second and third with nobody out with your three hole hitter up. And not just your three hole hitter, even though he does strike out here, your best hitter in James Tibbs. That's a big out for Schlesinger. Yeah, you see this fastball from Schlesinger up in the zone. Tim's not able to catch up with it. Big pitch, big out. But also, you've got Tibbs swinging for a different situation there. If he's swinging with runners on second and third, he knows that, hey, if fly ball does a job, I'm, my approach changes as a hitter, which a lot of the time means everything. Yeah, and absolutely. And now they're in a situation, too. You still could have second and third with one out, even if that still changes. But a big hit by Ferrer right here, though. That's going to tie the game. Ferrer two out hitting, just like the Canes. And as Smith touches home, Jaime Ferrer, he has been known as the Miami killer throughout his career. And he delivers. We're tied. Jaime Ferrer does a great job getting his hands extended on that pitch, driving it down the left field line. I love that he's using now the opposite side of the field, going to that pull side deep all the way to the fence there, but really good piece of hitting by Ferrer, picking his teammates up, knowing that, hey, this was a big situation for us, but don't worry, I got your back. Yeah, I totally agree right there, Alex. Big, big hit for him in a situation where the momentum could have really been going to Miami's way. Totally took that momentum back. Momentum is a lot of times everything in these big pressure moments, rivalry games. High and inside to Dingus, who has been on a tear. As of late, one of Florida State's hottest hitters, a grand salami against the Gators on Tuesday night, a no-doubt shot off the scoreboard and left. Florida State winning against the Gators 19-4. to Run rule completing the sweep of their rivals from Gainesville for the first time. Hadn't won three straight since 2000, hadn't swept since 10 years before that. Wow. I didn't realize it was that big of a difference between them. That's also going to get into right field. It's going to score a run. Dingus and the Knowles, a little two-out magic to take the lead at Hauser in the bottom of the first. Love the celebration in the dugout. Opposite field is the name of the game right now for the offense on both sides, too. I, I love these hitters letting the ball get deep, especially off a pitcher like Schlesinger, knowing that the arm slot's going to prove to be kind of the variable here. Got to let the ball travel in the zone. Try, try, just try to hit the ball the other way. Don't do too much with it, and good things happen when you put the ball in play firmly. Of course, a guy like Schlesinger, looking at some of his advanced stats, 65% strike rate with the fastball, 67% with the slider at times for hitters as that ball lifted foul and out of play. Uh, at times for hitters, you got guys who are in the strike zone so much they're, they're really for hitters sometimes they just know they're going to get something good to hit. Yeah, and, I, and you saw it like you said earlier with Arnold last night. Gators, I mean Gators, sorry, Hurricanes came out last night knowing they were going to get a lot of strikes from, Arno, strikes from Arnold and they just kept swinging early in the count and you're seeing that now of Schlesinger too. If you know you're going to get breaking balls and fastballs consistent, consistently in the zone, your hitters are going to swing the bat a lot more effectively. And that was a stat that they gave last night too of not only first pitch strikes but 
Foul ball there for Holbrook. How many Miami hitters were swinging at the first pitch strikes, right? Because, yeah, you can throw a first pitch strike all day, but if my hitters aren't swinging at what the pitcher's throwing, then what good does it do me? Absolutely. And you see Holbrook just letting this ball get right off that front foot. You know that hurts, but the Evo shield helps. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. A great addition to the game. Yeah, all their armor. Holbrook to right field. Costello has it measured and drifting. To his left, he makes the grab. JD goes, well, I'm already halfway back to Coral Gables. Gets the call, signs the papers, calls his wife. What a moment there for JD. Yeah, and, you know, it's. I told him, it's a good things come to those who wait. You know, I I thought he might have gotten the job when Morris left. I mean, he's he's a staple for, for the Hurricanes as well as some of these legends like Frazier and Morris. I mean, he has been around forever. He pitched for four years in the starting rotation. We get a line drive out right there for the first out for the Knowles. And I mean, I'm, I'm really happy for JD because I mean, he's definitely been around there and this is something that he's dreamed of having and he's going to do good things at Miami. One down after a carrier lines out to Lodi's. Here's JD. I mean, it's just, uh, you can feel the passion that he has for the program. I mean, he is as ingrained in Miami baseball as you will find. and. I know Gino DeMare gets the job there, and Miami fans still trying to find the glory days again that Jim Morris brought, and Coach Frazier before him. Four national titles is loud. That means you've got passion down there in Coral Gables. They really are hoping that J.T. Arteaga can turn things around and really make them that powerhouse they once were. And I know for people in, I don't want to age myself, but my age group <laughs> would really like to see that because with FSU getting back, it looks like Link Jarrett's getting the Knowles back to where they were and you get the Hurricanes back, that's always good for college baseball, having these two teams being at the top of the charts. And Alex, I think creates a sense of urgency like your rivals figuring it out too. <laughs> that always helps, right? Just kind of fire you up a little bit more. There's the Oregon transfer, Jack Scanlon. Waves through a two on fastball. There's some life there on Lauk's heater, 91-92 link. Jarrett, as he peers. Onto his southpaw rookie. Wanted the inside corner, didn't get it. And the count is full. Yeah, I think Lauk's had a few pitches tonight that he wished he would have gotten, hadn't gotten the calls. And look at the shift you've got going on here. Got Lodis all the way over on the other side of second base. Yeah, you're still seeing that now. College baseball starting to add that in now that Major League Baseball can't do it anymore. Right. You know, and me as a pitcher, you would think that I would like to shift, and I can't stand it. <laughs> I really like just traditional baseball. Go back to where your spots are. If you want to move a little bit, play it where it is. But I also can see where people are like, well, as a good hitter, you can make that adjustment, right, Alex? Hey, if they play the shift, hit it the other way. Um, right, but how much more pressure does that put on you, too, as the pitcher to have right. to execute those pitches? Yep, and especially at this level, because mm -hmm. you're not going to be as fine as you are when you get to that big league level. You're going to miss. She's got Coke on there. Yeah, you're going to miss for sure. And, and it's kind of always working towards how good can we be, right? But when you miss over the zone, I feel like, you know, the the hurt hurts a little bit worse. Yeah. One out, one on Jason Torres. We talk about Cuvet and the numbers he's put up. But Torres has arguably been the most consistent hitter in the lineup this season for JT, JD Arteaga, excuse me, in the Miami Hurricanes. JT at the dish. Hi, Aaliyah. As he pokes that one, a foul. Hi, Aaliyah, home with some of the best Cuban food you will find. <laughs> Definitely in the United States. And some people there swear it's better than some in the homeland. A lot of good eats there in the 305. One two pitch, misses high and outside, shut down. And Torres. And did not go. Torres was named to the midseason Golden Spikes Award watch list announced in early April. Last night, he didn't reach base, and just three times all year that's happened. The kid hitting in the high 370s. That time, Lauk able to record the strikeout, went to the heater. Chris, that's a good pitch here for the freshman. Yeah, and great location, too. Buries this on the inner half. And just actually more down the middle, but it's just what we talked about that fastball play. 
That 90-92 looks like it's 94-95 because of the spin rate on that pitch, and he just gets that ball to carry. So there's two down here for Lucas Costello. Huge RBI double last night. First pitch misses. Alex, really the north-south evolution in baseball coming after the game of softball, right? In the way that the, the game in softball has pitched north to south traditionally, how hard is it to try and attack pitches that high in the zone? Oh, it's tough. And as a hitter, we're always falling victim to pitches up in the zone. And that play not made. Would have been tough. There for Lodi's ranging across, but imagine that's a base hit. Yeah, I think that's got to be an infield hit. Lodis was way over in the five hole. Had to go a long ways to get to that ball and just couldn't quite get out of his glove to get the flip to Faroe in time. You see right here, he's way over in the five hole. It's a long ways for him to go and just can't quite get it in the transition out of his glove to get it to Faroe. Costello doing a good job just taking it right back up the middle, but tough play there for Lodis. If maybe you were in the shift, maybe you'd have made the play. I'm just saying, I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> just messing with you. It is a hit there for the Canes and Costello. Two down, two on. And it's J.D. Urso. The graduate stu student, excuse me, uh, Tampa. These conversations are, right? You're not going out there and getting a chewing. You're just kind of talking strategy, game planning. Hey, what's feeling good right now? What are you confident in? Because I feel like so much of execution comes with confidence and you're never going to be able to throw a pitch or, or hit a ball, lay down a bunt on something that you don't trust. Yeah, and you know, and, I, and that makes a lot of sense because I know Jamie Shoup did it a lot too. When he come out talk to you, just what you said, hey, what are you comfortable with right here? Do you want to go with the fastball or do you want to go with the breaking ball? What do you feel good with? And that's great analysis right there, Alex, because that is exactly what most of those conversations are. Some really timely hits too with two outs. Both teams right now sitting two for three with two outs. Good things happen with two outs, Chris. You can never close the door too early thinking that, oh, well, good, we're, we're going to get out of this inning because some of your biggest swings we saw last night, too, a couple of those runs coming across for Florida State in the big inning. That's right. The two down. And today. Full count. Urso staying alive. You know, Coach Baker, when he was here, that was his thing. They called it two-out nightmare. He loved to call it a two-out nightmare. When we're in there, you're getting two out, scoring runs with two outs. Urso's a 368 hitter with two outs so far this season. Another full count offering. Urso, right center, it's got some carry. The park is gonna hold it. Williams, as he approaches the track, reaches up. In the Amongst the leaders in so many categories, country, ACC. That's what Link Jarrett brings to the table. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did it at Notre Dame. Depth in the lineup, righty, lefty. Some guys are patient, some guys attack early, but all nine of them can leave the yard. Yeah, that's a pitcher's nightmare right there. When you're <laughs> opposing pitch and you're coming in and seeing those numbers, that's what you're worried about every time you throw a pitch. A missile hit right back up the box. Gans had a couple of base hits against the Gators on Tuesday night. And that's his first hit of the weekend. Look at how that pitch is gonna tail away immediately but just gets his hands extended so well driving it right back up the middle is Cantu waste no time to just I like how aggressive these Florida State hitters are you want to hit early in the count I know you said you, you don't mind being patient Arya, getting deep in accounts but I don't want to hit with two strikes so I want to hit from the very first pitch and get bat nope. I agree I don't know what happened on that pitch right there Faroe was kind of confused. The catcher was confused. They called it a strike. There's a shift there on Faroe. As he hits that one right to Schlesinger. Could be two to second for one. And they turn it. A little one for three. And two away. Yeah, pitcher's best friend right there. Schlesinger with a little PFP practice. Gets the comebacker. Nice turn by the Canes. Two down, nine hole hitter, Alex Lodis. Chris, did you like PFP? I actually loved it. Oh, I you mean, did? Yeah, okay. I do. I, I enjoyed it because, I mean, we'd get out there and it was kind of a competition between us pitchers out there going, hey, who, who can feel their position better? So I liked it. And Nick's Lodis. I'm sure because he didn't like hitting pitch. 
hitting uh, opposing hitters. <laughs> opposing batters, I should say. Second one for Schlesinger. That just kind of shows you though Schlesinger really trying to establish that inside part of the plate early in the game. Back to the top of the order. Williams, who was also hit by pitch. First pitch swinging. Off for an early catches a piece. A lot of conversation about who should lead off for Florida State. Williams could go Jackson West at times when he's in. Diamez Ross was the incumbent coming in there, but Williams showing you he's hitting for power, and it's an uptick in average. They're going to hold the runner at third that time. It's a double for Williams. Two outs, and Florida State's come to life again, now on the bottom of the second. Comes that two-out nightmare. Williams staying consistent, too. Look at how he's going to take this pitch on the inside part of the plate, but up as well. But because of it being a breaking ball, he's able to get his hands around it, sees it immediately out of the hand of Schlesinger. Does a great job getting a good piece, good barrel. A couple of bases helps. It's always easier, too, to score some runs when you string together a couple of doubles, extra base hits. It's hard to hit single after single, Chris. I know that was probably what you loved when <laughs> you were only giving up singles, but the extra base hits help for sure. Yeah, you definitely want to try to get, you know, keep those from happening in bunches because that opens the game up really quick when you start playing 180-foot baseball. Well, Cam Smith's down 0-2 quickly. Schlesinger has found a pocket in the zone he likes. Going back with the fastball a couple times. Oh, that hits Smith. Oh, and Cam's not happy about it. A little extra stare down. Bases loaded here in the second two down. That is the third hits batsman by Slesser. And you see that fastball again, trying to go in. And actually gets the catcher too right in the hand. I get Cam's frustration, but I promise you Schlesinger is not trying to put him on base. I know he's got a base open, but you're not trying to have that and bring James Tibbs to the plate, whether it's left on left or not. I don't think this is who you want coming to bat with the bases loaded. Right, and I like the competitiveness and, again, just the rivalry bringing out the emotions and stuff. But like you said, Chris, you're down in the count 0-2. He's not going to try to come in on you. Trust me. He wants it's like a football atmosphere as the nation's RBI leader steps in. Off the end of the bat, that ball's got eyes. It's going to do damage. Two runs are going to score. And James Tibbs has done it again. <laughs> and this hit from James Tibbs is a line drive in the books tomorrow, but a nice little bleeder there going to fall right into no man's land. Shallow left field, a couple of runs coming across to score. Hey, he'll take it. A couple of ribbies. Extending this Florida State lead now by three. Really good piece of hitting for James Tibbs. Responding well to a couple of free passes from Schlesinger. Yeah, and you see Schlesinger's reaction as a pitcher. You're like, come on, man. I made my pitch. I got one of, this, one of the better hitters in the country to get a swing. But when you put free guys on base, it ends up taunting you almost all the time. And the two-out nightmare is real. James Tibbs now 56. RBIs oh. on the air. Ferrer, left field, drifting back. The park holds it. Viegas with here so far this season. You think the Seminole fans like that? <laughs> I definitely <laughs> say so, especially compared to last year. I think they're really starting to get that feel of what it was like to be FSU baseball all over again. Look at that. Look at the crowd down the first base side. Long base hit, ripped it in the left fields. That is Miami's fourth knock of the game. Long swing and a good bat this weekend. No doubt about it. I shorted the Knowles one, by the way, before anybody comments. They're 20 and one at home. <laughs> we'll forgive you. It's After okay. last night. Mm -hmm. What a 28 and five start for Link Jarrett Seminoles. A year after one of the worst finishes in program history, the turnarounds. Link's going to be a hot name for Coach of the Year. Named midseason Coach of the Year by a couple of outlets, and if it continues, 
I mean, how can you not? To go from literally worst to maybe first. I was going to say, we'll maybe see. first. The ACC's heating up. There's that ball. Right field drifting away from Tibbs off the screen. Tibbs going to throw it into second, and he airmails it. Boy, you had a chance there for to get Viegas. Again, the Canes, who don't play here that often, probably unaware of just how short it is to right field, but the Knolls don't take advantage as Tibbs threw it to third. Well, I guess doing a good job here, getting his hands out on that pitch, driving it deep right field, but the wall is going to hold it. Tibbs, good relay initially right off the fence, but the throw going to be errant. You got to, cliche baseball, softball, right? You got to hit your cut, but man, you throw that ball into second base and you have a play. Absolutely, because you're right. He got a great read of it off the screen. Got it quick, but just, just airmailed it. Good start for the Canes. Second and third, nobody down. 1-0 pitch. Due to Cuvet. Miami trying to get right back into it. One and one to Miami's third baseman. Shades of an early Yo-Yo Morales. Miami fans know well. Yandy, one of the best hitters in the country. Especially last season. My goodness, he was un unbelievable. The Hurricanes team who finished as one of the national seeds fell in their own regional. That would end up being it for Damari. Gino Damari as a head coach. You look at what Cuvée's been able to do in year one. And with the runners in scoring position, he usually comes through. It's a one-two pitch. Watches the breaking ball. Miss towards the back foot. And the count evens it. Two balls and two strikes. And this is a situation that Florida State wanted to find themselves in back in the bottom of the first. So smart baseball here for Miami, trying to respond and string a couple of quality plate appearances together, doing so so far. And the exact situation, too, the three-hole hitter up. Exactly. Yep. exactly. I mean, to a T. But this is how you draw, draw it up, right? You have a double off the fence, and you hold your guy at third because you know you're sitting pretty, right? One of your best hitters, hottest hitters, smartest hitters up in the box. Give them the chance to hit a couple in. Mm -hmm. But Miami did say that they were working so hard on their base running, and they take a lot of pride in it. Cuvay. Right field's got some carry to it, and it's gone. One swing of the bat. The outstanding freshman ties the game. Daniel Cuvé sitting pretty with a couple of ducks on a pond, just takes this pitch, left way too up in the zone, not far enough off the plate. The wind helping him out just a little bit, but does a good job letting that ball get deep, gets his hands extended beautifully. Throw the muse up, Canes fans. Really good piece of hitting. They've had a chance to do that a ton when Cuvé comes to the plate. Oxford. They did all that with nobody down. Quickly got back into the game. Yeah, Alex, the Canes offense coming to life. Well, good teams make adjustments fast. And like Chris said, definitely second time through the order, but you're almost a little questioning why it didn't happen sooner, right? Because you have all the information. You know that you're going to get to this kid. It's just a matter of when. So hitter to hitter, you're talking, you're relaying information and what it's looking like out of the hand while you're in the dugout. So I like to see them making the adjustments. But that's exactly, too, what Coach Artiago was talking about was, you know, Florida State's bullpen, too. They've got a couple of guys that are injured right now, so we know their depth is really their most important piece. So if we can get to the first guy, I mean, we're going to be sitting pretty here if we can continue to make these adjustments. This 1-1 one, one coming to Gonzalez. Misses two. And one, Chris, what's the job here now for Oxford, and how does he present a different look to the Canes? Well... Oxford's best pitch is his breaking ball. So he's definitely going to go that. But he's been doing His fastball has gone up a tick since last year. He's been locating it pretty good. But it's, hey, come in. I need you to come in here and give us three outs and get us back in the dugout. Hit on a rope. But Ferrer tracking back makes the grab. For the first out of the inning. And retiring. The Canes outstanding second baseman. 
Yeah, with it being the third inning, too, you know, you're going into Oxford going, hey, man, I'd really like to get at least three innings from you if we can. And the Knowles have a thin bullpen here this weekend. Connor Whitaker, we talked about Ben Barrett, still not available for FSU. They hope it's about two weeks away from getting back into game action. He's throwing some bullpens scheduled for one over the next two weeks each week. They do hope they can get lighter back maybe next week, if not the week after. But again, it's all hands on deck for Florida State here this weekend against the Canes. As you see, lighter. They're hanging high right next to Jamie Arnold, who was incredible, and Ben Barrett, Connor Whitaker. They're all standing next to each other. That's perfect. Now, uh, you know, Thank you. It fits you perfect. There you go. Right there. You're going to see it again. And what's great, though, is watching Leiter, if anyone who watched the game last night, Leiter's excitement and enthusiasm in the dugout for his offense and for his team was still off the charts like he was still one pitching in the game. So you still like to see that for a guy right now who is still down with an injury. The Knowles were able to capitalize last night. Swing and a miss. Now one and two as Arnold went seven strong innings. He continues to be one of the best pitchers in the country. He had to pitch on a, another day of short rest. He's done it now three times in the last five weeks. There he is. Yeah, he's really, really turned it on and really kind of taking the lead in that rotation now for the Knowles. Carrier a mile high into the Tallahassee evening sky. Oh, they lost it. Miscommunication. That's going to go down as a double. And you want and you want to talk about something that frustrates you as a pitcher? That goes down as a double. And if you're the pitcher, you're going, you got to be kidding me. Alex, what do you see here? Talk about some unfortunate luck. You have Ferro and Tibbs just lack of communication flat out just almost looking towards each other somebody's got to want the ball and if you're the pitcher on the mound yeah you're a little fired up of come on guys i'm making the pitch somebody make the play good job you look at oxford that's a good job because guess what he knows they're not out there trying to miss the ball as a pitcher now hey you go in there step it back up let them know hey i got you guys don't worry about it go in there and make your pitch never trying to mess up but fine-tuning the small pieces of just kind of that leadership and somebody taking charge, right? That's what it's always kind of going back to is somebody's got to step up. Somebody's got to be the leader out here. And when things aren't going away, our way, they're putting up a couple run inning. Somebody's got to be the guy. Scanlon watches it 2-0, and oh, Tibbs. I guess better in April than in postseason baseball. I don't know if you guys remember Texas and Stanford Super Regional ending on a ball getting lost in the lights last year in Supers. Boy, that was crazy. Heartbreak a couple years ago for the Longhorns. It happens. We, we've all been on that side, right? Obviously, Chris, I know you were the PO, and you reminded me that of that very quickly in pregame here. But <laughs> we, we've all been the person on the field making the mistake. And let's call it what it is. Everybody knows you just messed up. So, right, you don't need the finger pointing. But just, like I said, somebody step up, take charge. Have yeah. your guy in the circle or in the, in the mounds back. Teammates are in the dugout having your back and in your hip pocket. It's, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, you feed off of it. And I think that's what Leiter's done such a great job of this year. He started off with the first start of the season just being a spark plug that just gets everybody in the game. And I think FSU, it, that's what started their whole season was that. I mean, Leiter just showed enthusiasm and showed that gutsiness. And, man, it's just looked like the Knowles have taken it and run with it so far this season. That pitching staff. Hoping that Oxford can keep this game tied, heading into the bottom of the third. So much action early in this game. Is Scanlon works a walk. So first and second, and one down as the Canes' third inning continues. And now you got Torres coming up, who might as well be a number three hole hitter. J.D. Arteaga is saying Torres has just such a feel for hitting. And said his freshman year he had to play behind C.J. Kafis and Yo-Yo Morales. He's a natural there in the box. And the numbers this season prove it. 375 at the moment. Eight home runs, 32 RBIs. Trying to get Miami ahead. They've tied the game with three runs. That's lifted to right field. Ball's been carrying here today. 
Going back, Tibbs makes the grab right up against the wall. Tagging and getting to third is Carrier. Here the flying high circus. They'll be back in action next weekend. 1 0. Costello over 80 starts as a Demon Deacon. They want out to the right fielder. Swing and a miss. Oxford climbing the ladder. And a little bit of extra right there from Oxford. 92 mile an hour fastball. He's typically in that 89, 90 range. Costello's got a couple of base hits already on the weekend, including his last plate appearance. Wow. Where did that miss? Tell you what, FSU's thrown about three or four pitches that have been really good pitches. Sadly, got called. That ball's a little out on that one. But I know Lauk had a few that just he wasn't getting. It's been a tight zone tonight. Two on to Costello. Lifted. Foul territory. And Cantu can make the grab. Wow, Florida State is really struggling this inning. Defensively with the ball in the air. Communication lacking. Link Jared immediately coming out to talk to him. You see right now batters are hitting 167 with runners in scoring position against Oxford. He's gotten the job done, no doubt. Boy, it's inserted some life in the Hauser. And that's how you'd like to have it between the rivals. Costello catches a piece. He stays alive, too, and two. I think a lot of the time, too, what we ask for from the umpires is really not always the call necessarily that they're making. It is also just the definitiveness in their call because a lot of times what umpires do is lack the confidence to be able to directly and clearly communicate what is happening on the field, which in turn causes so much confusion for the athletes and the coaches, allowing things to continue to spiral. Yeah, I agree. Swing and a miss. Breaking ball. Disgusting. From Ox. My boy Jason McGee with the stats behind us. Now, why not? It is always a pleasure when Florida State and Miami face. Coming into the weekend, they were dead even since 1981 in wins. I mean, are you kidding? That's some Duke Carolina basketball type of consistency and competition between the two. That one misses now. Three and one. Of course, Miami sweeping Florida State last season down in Coral Gables. Well, we were talking to a lot of the Knowles players earlier today. They were ready to get back and play the Canes. His dingus works the walk. And Schlesinger again right there. Two through two borderline pitches he didn't get. Turns into a walk. And you hate those pitchers, those leadoff walks. Talk about coming back to haunt you with the free passes more often than not. It's not necessarily just the free passes. It's, it's the leadoff guy getting on base that come around to haunt you more than almost 70% of the time. I think it comes around to score yeah. one way or another. But Florida State right now, two leadoff innings with people on base. A couple of hits, too, following that. And you see Schlesinger pitching backwards now, second time through the lineup. He started Dingus off with a slider. This goes to Holbrook with a slider as well. As Holbrook now down 0 and 2 after the foul ball. Holbrook platooning this season with Jackson West. Righty lefty combo. How often do you have two catchers hitting above 340 on the year? College baseball not very often and now you got one that's hitting even higher than 340. Seminoles get their first two on here in the bottom of the third against Schlesinger. Animals showing their excitement. Great piece of hitting by Holbrook, just showing the depth of this Florida State offense. That pitch was outside, but he's just so strong back there. We were just talking about it between innings. Holbrook, one of your toughest, most physical guys out there on the field, showcasing just how strong he is, able to pull a pitch on the outside part of the plate. 
Uh, doesn't always have to be for power. Sometimes the singles will, will work. A nice little five, six hole shot. Cantu bunts. Oh, it's going to stay in play. It was fair. It hung up in the air for a second. They are going to retire Cantu on the sack bunt, but both runners advance. Yeah, I think Scanlon was kind of wasn't sure, but it was high enough too, though, that Dingus was just kept going out of the rip. Didn't wait for a foul or fair call, which is a good base running that we talked about. It's right off the top of the plate. Ooh, that's borderline right there. I think the Knowles will take it, though. On the grounds, a look towards home plate. Go to first and second. Knowles will take the lead on the RBI, a ground out from Ferro. But the steady play chosen by Cuvay. And the Knowles retake the lead. This thing has been back and forth. Boy, I hope you took the over on runs. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Alex said it right. You know, dunk, playing 180 foot baseball is great and, and all, but playing small ball helps too. You get the bunt, moves him over, ground ball brings him in. Manufacturing runs, stationary baseball here for the Knowles. Hey, some of your best teams just have to find multiple ways to win. It's not always going to be the long ball. You can't always rely on the short game, too, because that's just going to be daunting throughout the season. It's way too long. Got to be able to swing the bat a little bit. Throw back into second. Scanlon does have a strong arm. Behind the play, Holbrook scurrying back. The 0-2 count is Scanlon. And started his career in the Pac-12. Oregon moving to the Big Ten after this season. That's a shame. Pac-12 baseball. Some underrated ball out there in the West Coast. Lodis down the line. Foul. Immediate call from Jeff Gozny. Third base. Umpire Cuvay was there and made the grab just in case. Lodis transferring from UNF, where he set the Ospreys freshman home run record with 16 of them. Struggled a bit to start ACC play, got benched in favor of Cal Fisher. And then the response from Lodis since, hitting over 400 since coming back over his last seven games. His home run against the Gators on Tuesday night, really just a culmination of the toughness he's shown how about that? Scorebug right on it with us. 11.05 OPS. On the ground. Gloved. And the throw across. Steady play from Urso. Locate pitches versus the actual movement that they're getting on their pitches. Ooh. Is that a dangerous question? Yeah, because with movement, I still, you know, you want the movement. Great slider right there by Oxford. But. The one thing I will answer is, would I rather have a guy with pitchability over velocity? Yes. Right. But movement and stuff, because I can still get a guy who is in the zone with movement but might not hit his spots as much, and that still plays really, really well. But I want a guy with pitchability over velo all day of the week and heart. You know, I want a guy who comes out there and competes all day on the mound, every pitch. You can't teach that. Nope. One or out, another strike out there for Oxford. Great 0-2 breaking ball from Oxford right here. Down and out of the zone. It looks like it's going to be in the zone. Gets the check swing for strike three right here. Great pitch. As a hitter, that pitch is so hard to lay off of, too, because it's just a little off speed. You're already sitting in that two-strike count. You're kind of on defense mode. And to have a pitch that looks believable enough out of the hand and just continues to fall out of the zone, so tough. Mm, that ball was smoked, but foul. I tell Long. you what. I tell you what. One thing I started learning near the end of my college career before I got into pro ball too, though, as a pitcher, when you got an aggressive offensive team, Alex, too, let that play to your advantage. You get right. two strikes. Don't throw anything in the zone. Now, I'm not saying be way out of the zone. Don't get too cute. But man, right out of the zone, and you'll get a lot of guys getting themselves out instead of you having to make your perfect pitch. Out of the order. Something I didn't learn until college was coaches commending, you know, pitches that were bouncing sometimes when you are in an 0-2 count. And just, again, it's the junk. It's the stuff that is so out of the zone that no hitter is going to remotely get barrel on it. But it's such a good 0-2 pitch. That'll stay in the infield. <laughs> <laughs> a 
First pitch to Vegas. High and inside. Oxford standout. Cape Cod League summer a couple of seasons ago. Struggled last season for Florida State. As that ball's lifted to right center, Williams drifts back now in. And he makes the grab. Incredibly well as Williams had herself a day. Another base knock for the leadoff man. He's been on base three times. Max Williams, a big night last night too. A couple of hits in yesterday's contest. Just takes this one the other way. Again, I love the opposite field power that he has. We saw the jack last night off of field. A good piece of hitting right there. Not trying to do too much with it. That pitch was up in the zone as well. So that's just a good piece of hitting. Seminole staff who really values the physicality Williams brings to the table at the top of the order. And they were talking to us earlier today and they said, look, we could move him. I know the on-base percentage maybe not as high as your traditional leadoff man. Maybe the batting average not in the 300s is, oh, that just was foul. By inches from Cam Smith for being extra bases. But more on Williams. They're, they're talking about the the way that he affects the rest of the order and the lineup. The Knolls are averaging almost 10 runs a game. And Alex, when you get to that bottom of the order, eight and nine, then you flip the top of the order and you've got a kid who can hit the ball out of the park. Greatness breeds greatness and the ability to have multiple people that can leave the yard is so dangerous. Chris already said it, it's pitcher's worst nightmare sometimes, right? But just that depth overall, but it is, it's these guys feeding off of each other. Momentum is such a big part. You know they, what they say, Aria, hitting is contagious and it really is because it, it's just a domino effect of, hey, you can do it, I'm gonna do it too. And it just trickles. And not wanting to affect the chemistry of a guy like Cam Smith behind him, who's hitting 407. Saw a mock draft that had him at 12th overall. I mean, that's serious money. As he hits it on a rope, it's going to stay up long enough for Viegas to grab the streamer. And there's one down here in the seminal fourth. Gosh, they have hit Schlesinger hard. Enough. Yeah, that ball was hit on the screws by Cam. Had a little top spin on it. Thought it might have a chance to get down. And now Suavemente playing on the Hauser PA. James Tibbs must be up to bat. Swing and a miss here to Tibbs, who originally had some Johnny Cash to walk up to. Uh, they go into the cages. Suavemente is what plays when they're warming up in the cages. Tibbs tells the marketing team at Florida State, I, I want to make a switch. Let's just see what happens. And I don't have the exact stats of what Tibbs is doing since Suavemente is his walk-up song, but the dude leads the country in RBIs and is one of the ACC's home run leaders. And you look at those numbers there, 419, 14 bombs to go along with that leading RBI total. And you're right, I know when they played it, me and you go, he's coming up to a different song. Well, that game he hit a bomb. <laughs> the very next game, he hit a bomb. So, it kind of worked. You see his last eight games, they had popped it up there. That one just foul down the right field line. And if you've talked to James Tibbs, you know Suavemente is the furthest thing from his taste of music. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Look at his last eight games. 548, four home runs and 16 repeats. It's ridiculous. I asked Link Jarrett, is he the best college hitter you've ever coached? He took some time to think about it. One word, yes. The adjustments that Tibbs makes, whether he's behind in the count, hunting early, opposite field home runs, he sprays it all over the park. It's complete, it's professional hitting from the Knowles right field. As he unloads, right field, forget it. James Tibbs once again, an absolute stud. James Tibbs, you are a monster. Ari, I think he was listening to you. I'm just good at my job. And that's really what it comes down to. And James Tibbs is really good at hitting a baseball. Clobbered and the Knowles extend the lead. And James Tibbs, the 2-2 pitch, the breaking ball that sits it so well. And look how fired up he is. Looks right in his dugout. He knows that's a big swing for his team. And I 
think he's pretty happy with it, if I say so myself. And you see that right fielder, he didn't <laughs> move. He took one hop and was like, yeah, I'm not getting that one. That's like the ultimate sign of respect. Age, you have a lot of those. <laughs> Sorry, I had to, I had to. You're like so proud of it. I'm just over here. No. That's good, that's good. First pitch, Ferrer. And it's caught by Urso. Ball off the fist as there's the curtain call for James Tibbs, Oliveira, the new pitcher, Brandon Oliveira. End of the game. There's Oliveira, the freshman from Hialeah. Six foot, 193. Chris, we've seen the Seminole team overwhelm opponents offensively all year. Oliveira is going to have to try and keep this thing manageable for Miami to make a comeback. Yeah, and you see his numbers. And we talked to Coach Artiega about it. And you got a freshman coming in in a situation like this. The one thing he does is throws a lot of strikes. Now, he has been hit pretty well this season. But 20 strikeouts in 18 innings and only five walks. So you're going to see a guy who throws it in the zone pretty consistently. And if you're a hitter from that perspective, you're sitting ready from the very first pitch. You're like, okay, I'm going to jump on something. I'm going to get something in the zone. And when I do, I want my barrel to make really good contact. To Urso again on a couple of hops. And he makes the throw. And so did. But so mature and composed in the box. Look at the numbers here today. Making the adjustments. J.D. Artiago is talking about the transition to ACC play, right? Like, arms get a little bit better. And scouting reports deeper heat maps all that stuff spray charts and for Cuvée it, it turns into kind of a chess match here against some of the better arms you're going to face on the year but his natural ability to put bat to ball really stands out early in his career well some of the things that you can't teach are just the heart that these players have right and just how much they care but one of the other things is how good can you be when people start finding out who you are? Adjustments are really hard. That's one of the things that James Tibbs for Florida State does so well is the fact that he's still found success even though people know him inside and out. Now Daniel Cuvay doing the same thing, only a freshman, but still adapting. And it's part of the transitional process here going from high school to college. It's just different. And you said it because, I mean, last night 0 for 3, you come back today and you're 2 for 2 right. already. I mean, great, great. Great analysis on his adjustments. Left center field, driven. That ball's got carry, there it goes. Daniel Cuvay, another home run. Almost right on cue. I feel like we're just speaking this stuff into existence here. Maybe we just need to keep talking about some really big jacks. <laughs> He's trying to get his Hurricanes dugout back involved in the game. I mean, this kid can really swing the bat as good as it gets. Comparisons to a young Tommy White, who's now at LSU and was monstrous at NC State early in his career. Tommy Tanks, Cuvay, absolutely blast this one. Cuvay, he just has that dog in him right now. There's just no stopping that, no quit. Look at that pitch. That pitch is elevated. Not a terrible pitch from Oxford, but Cuvay just showing how good of a hitter he is. Gonzalez first pitch swinging. That's a long run, Lodis. Oh, baby, how about it? The nod almost of yeah, man, you got to take it. Really good communication and good adjustment there from Florida State as a defense. I agree. Communication is big, and that was good communication right there. Lodis has played such a solid shortstop. A battle this preseason between him and Drew Ferro and Cal Fisher for who would win the shortstop position. As this ball hit pretty well. That's got carry to it. I think Williams is going to just have enough room right in front of the track. It's just a deep fly out there for Carrier. Again, we've talked about how the ball has been carrying, no pun intended, today here at Hauser. And again, anything in the air has got a shot. Two down, though, for Oxford and the Knowles here in the fifth. I think you mean pun fully intended. They're always intended. <laughs> I think you just say pun not intended for effect. Right, for, for the humbleness, right? No doubt about it. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. You know me well. I got you. Oh, goodness. And now Scanlon. Double-digit home runs in three seasons. 
as a duck in Oregon and Eugene. Him and Carlos Perez have handled some platoon there behind the dish. Scanlon, who has done well against fastballs this season, recorded the final out of last night's game, but he hit an absolute screamer to center that Diamez Ross was able to grab. And the Knowles winning by one run, five to four. Florida State on a three-game win streak. 1-0. Swing and a miss. Scanlon chased it high in the zone. All five home runs this season for Scanlon have come off that fastball. That note courtesy of Devin Travis. Hope everything going well with him and his family in South Florida. I believe he's going to be a father here soon, former Seminole. And the brother of Jordan Travis will be an uncle very soon. Hope they keep it in the family. Continue to produce some knolls. <laughs> One, two, on the ground. And Thoreau makes the play. Working against the offerings of the freshman, Oliveira. Swing and a miss. And it's 0 and 2. Holbrook starting his career at West Virginia, who's having a heck of a season this year themselves. They're in some regional conversations, some regional hosting conversations. High heat. 1 and 2. And high heat at 95 miles an hour, too. Oliveira coming in, throwing some gas and a good looking breaking ball from him. On the ground to third, Cuvay picks it. And he throws across the diamond for the out. It was just, it was fun stuff to watch, man. And it just builds in you as a Seminole, too. You talk talent and just rivalries and stuff, but let's talk about how hard it is to play a team three times in a row in one weekend, let alone six times in a row back-to-back -back weekends. I can imagine how daunting that was on you guys as players with the emotions, the competitiveness, the desire to perform and be excellent. Well, and That's it, awesome. And for you, Alex, think about it this way. If you as a hitter, say Friday night, the first series, they got you. What do you look? Oh, you're studying going. Oh, Next time they come here, absolutely. I'm ready to go. I'm going to be ready to hit. So I, it, I think that drove it a little bit more to having that extra series. I mean, it really is just an all-out chess match at that point because you literally know everything that everybody has, and it really is just your best versus their best because all, all your cards are laid out on the table and everybody sees what you're playing. That's right. I mean, can you imagine it? Oh. Cantu, right center field with Carey, heated off the top of the screen. And Cantu's got a double as he slides into second. And a one-out extra base hit for FSU off for center. Cantu showcasing some power here. That one left up in the zone. Again, thigh high, fastball takes full advantage. Drives his hands so well through that ball. Keeps him inside the ball, too. As a hitter, always trying to keep our hands inside as he's going to put that one in. Pretty important weekend in golf, That's isn't exactly it? what that's <laughs> for right there. Give you a little bit of the mass. There's a Tiger Woods fist pump. I know DeChambeau was crushing it day one. Haven't kept up today. A little busy. <laughs> <laughs> I love the play on themes of other sports, other athletes. Saw it with James Tibbs right there with Daniel Cantu. one -oh count to Ferro who bats righty. The switch hitter. Shows Bont. Pretty good one. Ooh. That's going to be rolling. Ooh, it trickles foul. Smart from Sinta and Scanlon to watch that play out. Let it ride to its final stop. I'll tell you what, 
Back in the day, Chip Baker, I promise you that doesn't go foul. Chip Baker had those lines slope just the way he wanted them. That ball staying fair all day long. That's funny, anytime we went on the road, Chip Baker, the first thing he would do, we get to a field. Coach Baker would get that baseball from home plate, roll it down both baselines just to see how that ball was going to roll, if it was going to go foul or stay fair. That one carves up. Farrow. Good breaking ball there. The back foot with the slider. Florida State looking to tack on a couple more here. Big opportunity. Two run lead. Could be a little dangerous with a really good hit in Miami team. Right back to that pitch. That's really good from Sinta. Yeah, Sinta with a back foot breaking ball. Two in a row. Fro not able to lay off of him. And you see this breaking ball here. Fro actually even trying to get that back foot out of the way as he swings at it. Two down for Sinta. That one's going to get away from Scanlon, trying to advance to third. And doing so is Cantu. Heads up play from Urso to back Cuvay at third, or that might have been another 46% of the time since has gone to it. That one gets away. Cantu coming home. The tag not in time. And Moles extend the lead to three. I like the aggressiveness, but we got to get dirty there. You got to slide on that play. <laughs> Worked out for him. Cantu coming in to score. This is a big one for Florida State. They knew they need a couple more to push across there. Cantu barely just avoiding the tag. Sinta almost looking like he laid it on him, but look at the celebration in the dugout. Love how fired up these Florida State players are getting. So much fun they're having. Of course, winning is fun. Being in the lead is fun. You guys made me laugh because at the same time, Chris now coaching. Alex, former ACC Player of the Year, both scowling after Cantu doesn't slide. <laughs> at the same time, and you looked at each other. <laughs> I mean, you're taught that when you're in nine, ten-year-old ball. I mean, whether it's sophomore, hey, you got to get dirty right there. And sometimes we can't help what our faces are doing, man. It's just the reaction. But Florida State finding ways to score. It did it a couple innings ago. Some situational opportunities. Two on pitch. Over the top of it is Lodis. My good, my good friend Danny Graves is watching the game, and he's a former Hurricane. And this one hurts a little bit, I think, for him, but I had to hit him with the go Knowles just right in the beginning, but right now we're neutral. Danny Graves, another good Hurricane for sure. He does a great job as well on ACC Network and with his podcasts yeah. covering the ACC. I was told Devin Travis did have a son. A couple of days ago. Nice. So another That's ACC awesome. Network analyst That's awesome. is Stuff now a dad. Congratulations are definitely in order to yep. the Travis family. I guess it makes missing the last couple of games more worth it, right? Now yeah. I can tell it. Yeah, I know it really His killed kid, Devin yeah. not to be able to be up here <laughs> to call the Gators game. And he was supposed to have last night as that's foul. Gabby Sanchez did a nice job filling in on short notice. I'm sure Gabby's watching this as well, unless he's busy with the Marlins. I didn't look to see if they're playing tonight. Have they played yet all year? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Marlins. Uh, the Braves hey, fan came out of you. No, I, but I, 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 was, I played for the Marlins too. I was in the Marlins organization as well, so. I think they said but, they had NC State games this weekend, I think was yeah, what they were saying in last night's games, yeah. Lodis offers it the 2-2. Right fields. Costello jumps back, now comes in. I'm telling you guys, balls in the air, adventure. How about that? Is one of the great moments. Chris Chavez, you were on that team. A moment you'll never forget, huh? That's that's honestly my favorite. And I talked to Alex about it when we were looking for the video. And uh, that's one of my, if not my favorite, FSU. Definitely FSU hurricane moment. 
you know, you're in a tie game, you're in extra innings against your rival. Jay Tesmer's on the mound for the Canes at that time, and Jay Tesmer was, he came in the game, it was over pretty much for the Hurricanes back then. Um, and, you know, meet Mike Martin Jr., absolutely one of the best pimp jobs I've ever seen on a home run. Bat flip almost lands out at the pitcher's mound. It was an awesome moment. You did get to see the end of our celebration there at home plate. Oxford there with a big strikeout start the inning. But, I mean, it was it was a really cool moment. I think it was like the 13th inning, I believe it was, in that game, too. Uh, but, yeah, that was, that was my favorite, probably, FSU hurricane moment. There's one down as Costello now at the plate. Costello one for two on a rope, but right at Ferrer. Two down quickly here in the Miami sixth. We're seeing a little bit of hesitation from the outfielders on both sides of the field, to be fair. But just a couple of hiccup type steps right there at the end of almost questioning are they going to come in and catch it? I'm not sure. Yeah, and the wind's not blowing now earlier on the right field play. So, I mean, earlier it was blowing. So you had some, even in the infield, too. I mean, the play at home, you had Cantu at first base and made a catch, but it was still kind of, so had some shadows early, too. And also, those balls that are hit on the nose, of course, tend to die down because they are hit so square. Mm -hmm. Makes it tough as an outfielder to judge. I never liked fly balls. How about you, Chris? You were probably running out of the way, I would hope, right? Most of the time. 100%. I mean, that's <laughs> Coach Martin taught that. It's just, if you're on the pitch mound, that ball's hit. You just you, point to the ball. Yeah. Hey, it's right there. Someone come catch it. <laughs> Make sure you're out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Ground balls, I'm okay with. This thing starts getting elevated, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> that's okay. I was the same, and I wasn't a pitcher, so. <laughs> as ball players, did you guys ever enjoy sunsets and the scenery around Always. the parks? Yep. Always. Always taking in the views, are you? How good is that? On the ground, Lodis gobbles it up and throws it across. In the country and scoring, averaging nearly 10 runs per game. They've got eight. So far through five innings, this is their sixth chance. Sinta, first pitch, hello. Good work from Torres to be ready. And it's one down. That gives way to Cam Smith and Alex. What has impressed you most so far about this seminal offensive attack? I think just the timely hitting, getting people on, of course, always helps. But just from there, when you have people on base, getting them in motion and, and bringing them in, right? It, it's one thing to get people on base, but to really string offense together and capitalize on those opportunities is a really hard thing to do. So I'm most pleased on the side of Florida State with the capitalization and the timeliness of the big swings. I think that's where Miami has kind of missed the boat a little bit because they, they've had some good hits. They've had eight hits so far on the evening, but again, it's all about the back-to-backs, right? The big swing, of course, coming off the bat of Cuve with a couple of home runs, but it is. It's all about when you have people on base, you've got to figure out ways to bring them in no matter what that looks like. That's going to be another hit for Cam Smith. And when you're good, that baseball helps you. And it finds the grass. And you saw as he was hitting 44 consecutive games, reaching base safely after his double in the first inning. Another multi-hit game. That is now his 19th multi-hit game of the year, just behind James Tibbs for the Seminole lead. How yeah. hard is that to do? 44 consecutive games, finding your way on base. Like, come on, just consistency. You are reaping consistency here. Yeah, and that just shows you how much he's matured from last year and what they talked about. This mainly is pitch recognition that he's had at the plate, not swinging at stuff out of the zone and chasing. His, his ABs have just come a lot more quality at bats. And you look at what he's done at home this year, 466, 1209 OPS. I'll tell you what, if he's hitting 423 overall, then it's not much different on the road. And that's the consistency you're talking about. Yep. You know, and you talked about it earlier, Alex, too, about just the line and what the difference is between FSU and Miami. What I feel is just shows you how good FSU is one through nine. Their depth is just insane. And talk about Smith being an ACC Player of the Year candidate. 
And he might be atop the list, if not. Arguably one of Florida State's hottest hitters again, like you just said, Ari, if not for Cam Smith as well. And back to back, they're dangerous. We just talked a couple innings ago about how important it is to surround yourself with really great hitters. And one of the things that Coach McGahee was saying in the Florida State dugout talking to him pregame was greatness breeds greatness. And if you want to continue to elevate your game, you've got to get yourself around other great players. You know what they say all the time, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. You're always trying to bring yourself up. I see Mongo in the house here for the animals, a legend. As Tibbs works the locks into wanted no peace. He sure didn't. And you are right about Mongo. He is a legend. Gives the best Knowles cheer. He's right on it. Here we go. Smith at second, Tibbs at first. Something might be wrong with the pitch comm thing. Pitch comms, not, yeah. yeah, pitch comm's not working. As Gutierrez quickly. And now Miami's pitching coach spent time in the Red Sox organization. There you go. if that's obviously why he didn't deliver the pitch. Technology issues, not something I thought I'd ever say on the broadcast about something going on on the field. Continues to evolve the game of baseball. It's pretty incredible. First pitch breaking ball. We want to know. Yeah, the Canes 60, a little over 67% strike ratio right now. An RBI double in the first. Hits it hard right back up the middle. In the center field. They're going to wave home the runner. Oh, no. Smith didn't see his third base coach. They didn't communicate again. Now, this one, I mean, Ferrer hits this thing right on the screws. And I think Cam's thinking the same thing we talked about earlier. When in doubt, you hit the brakes. And you see McGay, he has the brakes up, then he starts, and that's tough right there. That's a tough one for Cam Smith, I'll be honest with you as your runner. If you're already breaking, then you're getting the wave. That's a that's tough. What do you think, Alex? I think he's definitely erring on the side of better safe than sorry, because we already saw that kind of blow up back in the first inning, so definitely learning from the mistakes. But I think that ball was hit on the nose. It came in quickly from long. And at this point, I'd rather be in a situation of bases loaded, one out, than I would. But Coach Begay, he did throw his hands up for a second, to be fair. And Cam Smith, that's what he picked up. Bases are loaded. Nowhere to put Marco Dingus, who's already got a couple of grand slams for Florida State this season. Yeah, and with a guy who's been throwing a lot of strikes in Ferreira's hit, I mean. Dingus is liable to put one off the dang scoreboard out there and put the lights out on it. That one caught the knob of the bat. It'll be a foul ball. One and two. Dingus in RBI double back in the first himself. Walked in the third. He's two for three. Does well to lay off the breaking ball. Yeah, that's a good breaking ball, especially one two count. Good job by Din just to lay off that. Miami in double play depth up the middle. 
Boy, wouldn't Diaz love that. With one down. Den just got a pitch elevated. And he drives it foul. And onto the Seminole hitting facility. Over there in the batting cages. Cam Smith at third, James Tibbs at second. And I'm A for it at first. Here's the 2-2 from Diaz. High heat, three and two. And the Seminole crowd about to come to life. Nowhere to put him. Diaz gets his pitch. Dingus awaits. Misses. And he walks in a run. Seminoles extend the lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Um, Diaz about just killed his catcher right there. Exactly. If the pitch call didn't work and step off and call time, like, hey, I am not. Composure, <laughs> don't, composure. Don't, don't just say, well, I think this might be what they call <laughs> Folks, the Animals of Section B and the Marching Chiefs working hand in hand have turned Hauser into a zoo. Just the way the animals like it. Florida State on the verge of breaking this thing wide open. Miami needs Chris Diaz to hold this thing to give that offense a chance. It's a capable lineup. However, the Knolls threatening big. And already one run in. Here in the bottom of the sixth. It's a big moment for a freshman. This has to be as tough an environment as Chris Diaz has faced in his life. Well, and think about it. Like we said, he's only been in two games before this one, so it's by far the toughest one he's been in. And Scanlon's trying to do it there and pump him up. You saw him give him a hard slap on the butt, trying to get him fired up right here. And he's struggling to find the zone now here to McGuire over. Here's a strike on the outside corner. It's two and one to Holbrook. Who's got one base hit so far already tonight? That was in the third. On the ground, slow roller. Cuvée's just going to go to first. Retires Holbrook. Tibbs scores. Florida State has doubled its lead. They lead by five. Yeah, slow roller there. I think Kube made the right call there. Don't try to force it out the second. Take that for sure out. Wasn't hit hard enough to turn it. There's Daniel Cantu. Fourth plate appearance. Well, he was thinking first pitch, ambush. <laughs> The fastball's got some life from Diaz. I was just about to There's say that. There's some giddy up to that thing. Yep. And Cantu clearly in attack mode. Now 0 and 2. Cantu, two base hits, a single back in the second, a double in the fifth, a sack bunt in the third. So he's two for two officially. Second and third, two down. Scanlon saved the run. There's some friendly fire. Got the young Knowles putting the U upside down and the Maybe not. hurricane fan going the other way. <laughs> Teaching them at a young age. Swing and a miss. He pulled the string. In this game, there's so many factors that you just got to keep scoring runs when you can. Jacoby Long. Second hit, second single of the night. He continues to tear ACC pitching. And he leads off the Hurricane seventh with a knock. 
I enjoy watching this kid play baseball. Yeah, he plays hard. And you're probably going to see a guy, well, not in this situation, maybe with a score and a lefty, but he can run. There's only three or four in stolen bases, but he's got some wheels. J.D. Ardiaga talking about the presence that Long has there leading off. Went two for four in that first game at Duke last weekend. They move into the leadoff spot. He just continues to tear the cover off the ball. J.D. talked about trying to stay positive. I mean, they're losing a ton of one-run games right now. Their last four losses on the schedule, all by one run. Three to Duke last night. It's a long season, and yes, you got to get going at this point. Yeah, you see that right there. Five and five record, one run games. Two and four in ACC play. They've been able to get over the hump at Mark Light Field, right? As Viegas center field, does Williams see it? Looks like he's got it tracked, and he makes the grab. That's the first out of the inning as Viegas is retired. Dismissing this one is Viega. A little bit of frustration there as he knows that that pitch was the one he wanted to hit. And when you get the pitch, when you're in the box and you get the pitch from the pitcher that you're sitting, man, you do not want to miss it. When you do it, it feels like a long day. Yeah, especially like you said, when you when you know you got it right, you, you know, hey, I know exactly what's coming. Okay, I'm on it. And then, nope, I'm not on it. First pitch to Cuvay. He's way through. He's got a multi-home run game. We talk about the similarities of these teams, too. Headed into the top of the seventh. This is the third time on both sides of the field that your leadoff hitter is leading off the inning. So it just talks about how close we are game to game. But Florida State's execution, getting those timely hits, is really what's setting them apart. The run differential being the biggest variable here. Obviously, the five-run difference. But their hits, only a couple hits away. But Florida State just tacking on a couple of the extra base hits that we talked about early on, Chris, and how crucial they are. Miami looking to respond and put a couple of QPAs together. Yeah, and also, like you said, too, the aggressive base running for FSU as well. You know, they've been able to move people over with a short game. They've moved up on pass balls, scored on one. So they kind of did the whole package today. You've seen a little bit of everything from them. One, two coming to the one they call Danny Dingers. Do they or did you get him that? I promise you, it's on the uh, <laughs> Miami social media account. And here are a couple of Dingers. Well, let's take a look why. Kube is no stranger to the long ball here. That one going to deep right field. And we got to sit back and enjoy that seat in the house up here. This one, another deep shot. Left field wall on that one. Of the celebration, the humbleness, right? He's taking after you, Aria. The humble brags, looks like he does it every day. If my name had alliteration like Danny Dingers, there would be no humility. <laughs> Swings and misses there. Well, I'll tell you what, you talked about it, and Miami has been blessed. I know we got, we got the big strikeout right here, but you see this on a breaking ball down and out of the zone. Oh, that's so tough. It's yeah. so hard. To and hold you, the bat back. And you see Cuvet, he showed his face. He's like, ah, I knew it, but I couldn't stop. And he's, you know, somebody who's seeing the ball so well as he was today, too. He's trying to do a little bit too much. You see his frustration there. He wanted to really help his team out. Well, as a hitter, I mean, we, we've all fallen victim to that, I will say. I'll be the first to say I've swung at a lot of bad pitches in my career, both up <laughs> and down in the zone, some bouncing to the plate where you just want to spin and try to swing again, you know? <laughs> I'm sure you've thrown some of those to hitters like me, Chris, but <laughs> it's so frustrating when you beat yourself because you, you really do. You're almost just committed to swinging prior to the pitch being thrown, not seeing it out of the hand. And when you've already made your mind up, it makes for a long day in the box. But luckily, Kube's not having a long day in the box, but still get beat a time or two. I see that right there. I like to see that Coach Posey right there. He knows the situation. You got two outs. Quit being cute. Getting on to Oxford right there. Go after him. Go get him. Mm -hmm. First, you don't see that much from Coach Posey, right. though, are you? Really calm guy. And you see that frustration. From him. I like to see that. That's good to see. Let me ask you this, though. He's at a career high now, four and two-thirds. 
nearing 60 pitches. Not sure how many times he's had to be extended like this. How much does that affect the later portions of your outing? And it, and it can. I think that's why they want him to go right out. And they're like, dude, just finish this inning. This is all we need from you so we can go to the next guy. But we'd like for you to finish the inning. And you see Link on the walkie-talkie there. This is probably his last batter regardless. You got Joe Charles in the bullpen ready to go. Busting out the smelling salt. <laughs> He pitched 13 pitches last night. And so there was a walk. And told we're working on getting our center field cam back up. Do apologize. Two on, two down. Time called, <laughs> and you wonder if this is the end of the rope. That's how you manage a team and, and keep the dugout fun. Lighthearted, right? Competitive, but lighthearted. Yep. I think that's one of the ways, too, that the games have shifted, both in baseball and softball, and maybe more so in softball, because I think softball is kind of mimicking a lot of what baseball does, but is the identity and the conversation around role players and knowing what your role is and when you come in to a spot and can fill your role and, and excel in that, there's a lot to be celebrated. And, and I don't think those conversations were happening enough, at least on the side of the women's game. But I love it because it's just full ownership. It's full transparency of the common goal and having a good time doing it. Yeah, and you didn't see that last year for the Seminoles in the, in the dugout like you're seeing this. You're not good at winning changes things. Right. But it started with the attitude, in my opinion, at the beginning of the year that made them start winning and to keep doing what they're doing. But you're absolutely right. you got guys kind of like coaches. you got a good cop, bad cop with a coach. Right. you got to have the players who are the clowns in the dugout and then the <laughs> other ones who have the intensity, and it keeps a good mix. And I think that's what FSU has this year is a really good mix. They would love for Joe Charles to get him out of the zone. 2-2 two -two pitch coming with two on and two down. The dangerous Lorenzo Carrier at the dish. Ton of power in the bat, drifting foul out of play. And you see the velo, 96 miles an hour on that fastball. You know, Charles, who pitched last night, being able to bounce back and still show that velo is a good sign moving forward for the Knowles. Two innings last night, Chris. No hits, no runs, no walks, a strikeout, 13 pitches. So he's able to come right back. Carrier works the count full. If he can get on base, it'll be Scanlon who's on deck. Jason Torres is in the hole. Lift it. Left field, Park's going to hold it. Coming in is Ferrer, and he makes the drive. Well done. Mm. Ferro, first pitch, rips it off the bottom of the screen. Looking for extra bases, he's got extra bases. The seminal lineup continues to mash here, especially at home. And you got Farrow to that left side again where he's a little bit more comfortable. Gets a fastball and jumps all over it, drives it off the screen for a double. Great piece of hitting. Farrow wasting no time. First good pitch that he sees, he takes a hack. Love this piece of hitting, and Chris, nobody said it better than you, right, when that ball hit bad. I heard a little oomph. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of excitement, yeah. so hey, I'm here for it. There you go. <laughs> He's looking to drag his way on. That's going to go foul. Something you said earlier, Alex, was first pitch of the at-bat, sometimes the best thing you'll see. Oh, couldn't, I mean, come on. Who wants to hit in two strike counts, right? Especially with people that have good breaking balls and whatnot. And we've seen Diaz have some really good pitches with some good runs. So the first pitch that's in the zone and something I'm sitting below wise. Bot calls. And you, takes third. and you saw Ferro right there. He knew it. He pointed right to it. Gotten Diaz his head a little bit right there and calls the ball. Watch for right here. Nope. He's like, uh-uh. <laughs> Yay. 
Tell you what, that's a good looking breaking ball by Diaz. You see what our RTA, Coach Artiega sees in Diaz, though. The fastball's got the life. Breaking ball's there. It's just getting that consistency, trying to get him in more games. You know, freshman only been in two games going into this one. 0-2 to Lodis. He spits on it. Seminoles have uh, another insurance run 90 feet from home down at third in the form of Drew Farrell. So dribbler, foul. I think part of, too, even that ball, Chris, is a little bit of the freshman jitters there. We've seen it again with the pitch calm mishaps last inning, the mix-up of pitches and what was being thrown. Scanlon behind the dish and you know somebody that's maybe a little bit older with some more experience out there on the mound is going to call time and regroup but you have Diaz working fast obviously getting the ball called there a little bit rattled yeah. and just misses the zone two yeah. and two and he's had a good home plate umpire has been consistent tonight with both teams though he's had a kind of a tight zone Did Lodis go? Yes, he did. Check down to first base. And one out. Let's take a look here and see if Lodis did break path. Yeah, it looks like he did offer. Tough pitch to lay off of again with the breaking ball off speed pitch. As a hitter, when you're even behind or even in the counts. Thomas. Are you Masood? This is fun. A little bit of a different angle. I know, pr probably not our most flattering shot here, huh? But hey, it's <laughs> a good time. I'm trying to figure it all out, actually. <laughs> yep. Frenchy, my man <laughs> behind the camp. camera. <laughs> He's always ready, I'm telling you. We're on the spot. This is a big game for both teams, guys. And for Miami, they got to hold Florida State to a five-run lead for FSU. As they're about to get insurance, that's exactly what they want. Faro touches home, and it's 11 to five. They got a wild pitch there. Miami coming in with another freshman pitcher. And so it is 11 to 5. And the inning will continue. So, score the run. It'll be a wild pitch. And Williams back in there. I'm going to say that Williams doesn't square around right here. Thank you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> and Caruso does do a really good breaking ball. So far, Williams was hit by a pitch in the first inning. Double in the second and single in the fourth. Did he go that time? No, he did not. Two and two now, they count. To Williams from Caruso. Williams, the home run last night. Ended up being the difference with Florida State's 28th victory of the year. What a breaking ball. 68 miles an hour from Caruso. Backwards K. Well, Caruso might have got away with a little one there, but he'll definitely take it. Ball might have been up and in a little. Such a tough pitch. Oh, as a hitter, it really is. I mean, nothing you can do with that. I think the only thing working in Caruso's favor was the fact that it was breaking back toward the plate. It was maybe the only shot as to why the call was made. But hey, in the two-strike count, you've got to be ready. And the last thing you want to do is leave it up to the umpire's hands. But tough one. Right back to that breaking ball for a strike to Cam Smith. Named a team captain before the year started. And a... Near lock for the first round as he Ooh. screams this one to left. Leaping grab made. Viegas climbing the ladder. And he robs Smith of extra bases. Knowles to get another. They lead 11 to 5, but how about some defense? Who's getting this one? The pitcher. Viega, great play out there in left field, just making the grab over the shoulder all the way to the fence, using it as a little ricochet there. Miami looking to come in and score a couple of runs. In that series, the last home series here in Tallahassee. 
And there's a pitch you don't see from Charles very often. That was a nasty first pitch changeup. Charles, 13 pitches last night in two innings, very efficient. And Chris, he's back out there. You just let him ride the rest of the way. Yeah, you know, we kind of talked about it during the break. You got to. I mean, you're not going to throw him tomorrow because he's gotten up two days in a row. And this saves your bullpen going into tomorrow, too. Leaves you with about five fresh arms going into tomorrow after your starting pitcher. And he picks up the strikeout there of Scanlon. Scanlon's been getting heavy diets of breaking balls. He struggled with that pitch. And here again, good one from Charles. Yeah, slider right here, 88. Scanlon just swings underneath it. Look at the pitch sequence there, too. It was breaking ball, fastball, breaking ball, the fastball coming in in the mid-90s. Such a tough transition to make as well, pitch to pitch. Just always, always kind of in the back of your head of that two-strike count. What am I going to get? What do I have to sit, you know? And typically, you want to just sit something right back up the middle. You don't want to overswing in two-strike counts. Easier said than done. Right. But I, that's why I think pitching, and you're starting to see it more in the big leagues now, too. Pitching backwards. That off-speed stuff first, I mean, it really mixes it up and changes things. I think in this day and age, these kids have been seeing hard fastballs right. so much well, and, and to get used to it. And why, right? Because you want to get ahead, especially from a young age. Obviously, at this level and the pros, way different skill-wise. But from a young age, it, it's fastball to get ahead, and then you work your junk in. But now you're working those off-speed breaking ball pitches in much earlier in accounts and I mean I feel like you'd be remiss not to say as a hitter that it, that's not in your head because of course it is it's always in the back of our head especially when you have pitchers that can throw change-ups in any count right it's, it's scary there's a strike and then it even makes it more when you actually have some velo <laughs> so I mean now you're right so now you're going oh well, here comes 88 slider here comes 86 changeup. oh by the way here comes 95 fastball right on your hands too. yeah throw that there. spots it yeah <laughs> Kulikowski the pinch hitter Driving it into the gap in left center and catch not made by Williams. Both Ferrer and Williams going after it. And it looked like Ferrer kind of tailed away from it right at the last second. Maybe he thought Williams had a beat on it, but it was just drifting and tailing away from the old center fielder. It'll go down as a double. We've seen communication be a bit of a mishap here for Florida State defense. This one being the third ball that's kind of hit between a couple of players. Williams does look like he was going all out. Ferrer is tailing off on that play, obviously getting the backup. It's a good relay in, but you want to have a, a fielder that's going to be able to go all out and make the play. No hesitation. You saw just the slightest bit from Williams in center. Well, like you said, you know, Williams, center fielder, they're the captain in the field, so right. they've got play over everyone. So the way Ferrer tailed off, I believe Williams probably called the ball. But at the same time, like you talked about communication, you have to know as a hitter lefty, he hits a ball. It's going to be Where's slicing to that left fielder. Ferrer's got to take that ball. But again, Ferrer just learning how to play left field, really trying to work at it. Williams probably wanting the ball, but, you know, just shaded over. That's just a long ways for that center fielder to go. Ferrer's played multiple positions, too, wearing a Florida State uniform. We've covered him when he's been playing out there in right field, obviously this season more in left. So similar concept, right? But other side of the field does factor in, like you just said, when you're facing left-handed hitters, the way the ball's going to tail. But that's the pre-pitch thought process that we're having as players individually. It's the way we slow the game down and try to just work ahead of ourselves before the plays and the pitches are actually made. Yeah, and I think Coach Jarrett talks about that. You just said pre-pitch preparation. Like, Always. you need to be thinking, all right, if it's if it's hit here, what am I doing? If it's hit here, where am I going? You've got to know a lefty. If he hits it in that gap, it's going to be slicing this way. It's just what the ball does typically. So, again, just learning how to play it. Costello and the Canes. If they're going to mount and come back, it's got to happen. And again, back to Captain Obvious. It's got to happen now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sorry, I kind of threw that one in there. Yeah. Sorry, Chris. Five outs, oh, huh? I love it. That's why I, I used the Captain Obvious. Oh, that's a dad joke. What are yeah. you talking about? Come on, I love that one. Oh, good stuff. Here's the 2 2. Looping, shallow left center. It is not caught. It's going to get down for a base hit. And there will be runners on the corners. Here for Miami in the eighth with one out. Again, Costello coming up with a hit. 
He did it last night. Now you got Urso. He's out in front off the end of the bat. Kind of like some of the FSU's hits tonight, just able to find a place to drop in there. Costello, another line drive in the books tomorrow. That's Although right. Aria pointed out, there's way too much technology and social media now that will yeah, his buddies will call very, him out. Right, make yep. it very known that it was not in fact a line drive, but hey. <laughs> Either way, it's a hit and helped his team. Right, just make them fact check. There you go. Either way, guys. Because so many people don't this day and age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a hit is a hit, and I will take uh, it no matter what it looks like. Exactly. We joke that every ball that you hit on a nose, right to a fielder, one of those falls in. So it's just the baseball gods working in your favor. Yep, even in and out. Either way, Miami's got two on. Here with just one out. And if Urso leaves the park, things get really interesting. Yep. Top of the order, due up. After Urso, Long, Viegas, Cuve. We've had some good weekends here for Miami so far. And Charles trying to get a ground ball right here. Urso 0 for 3. Kulikowski at third, Costello at first. It is a 3 1 count. As Miami trying to mount a late charge. See the Seminole bullpen starting some activity over there and right. And Holtz and Short getting loose. Bases loaded after the walk. Chris, what guy in your order don't you want to walk more often than not? The one that just walked. The, the nine, <laughs> the hole, nine right? hole guy. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to go right at him. Yep. And Michael Posey, you going to walk out there? Try and settle down. Show them, hey, dude, we're here together. We're fighting this thing together. Base is loaded. Top of the order. Jacoby Long. Couple of hits already tonight. He's got three this weekend at the top of his Miami order. You know, and I mentioned Charles trying to get a ground ball. FSU's only had three ground ball outs tonight. This one's lifted. Tibbs coming in. Will they send Kulikowski? They do not. He slams on the brakes. What a throw. Home from Tibbs. <laughs> Tibbs trying to show off a little bit of more things he can do at the pro level. Showing those scouts, hey, I, not only can I hit it, not only do I have great at-bats, but I got a pretty good arm out here in right field. Oh, what a night for James Tibbs. I thought he was just going to air that one out. I wouldn't run on him either. <laughs> Smart play. Let your hitters have some more opportunities. The last thing you want to do is double up yourself on a play at the plate that, quite frankly, at this point in time, doesn't even matter. Here's Viegas. Well, Miami would love something here. Hit on the ground. It's going to get under the glove of Lodis. Two runs are going to score. Viega is going to just drive this one right back up the middle. Good piece of hitting, not trying to do too much. Exactly the kind of at bat you want to have in a situation like this. Two outs, bases loaded. Swing by swing, one swing of the bat right now is not going to change this ball game. So you want to stay under control and just try to pass the bat. Really good job by the two hole for the Hurricanes. Bringing in a couple of runs. And now you pass the baton, by the way. Just about to say that, Aria, you got a guy now that in one swing Hello. makes this a one run baseball game. His name is Danny, and he hit ding and he hits dingers. Excuse me. <laughs> On the ground, though, that time he rolls it over, and a second nose get out of it. And Caruso going to try and keep things at four. Miami's got a shot. They've given themselves a chance. However, the middle of Florida State's order is no easy task to try and navigate, especially James Tibbs. Like you said, the Hurricanes 
just fighting, keep getting runs, keep staying in the game. But that's what you're going to get from a team like this with Coach Artiega there. And he doesn't mean his players are going to fight till the end. Hey now. 66 mile an hour curve ball. Sails wide left. Yeah, that's that breaking ball again, just getting away from Caruso. I mean, we can go back to another major just a bit outside. But Our that would be inside. Yeah. In that moment. <laughs> I was going back to the dodgeball reference. <laughs> what you Dip, got there? dive, duck, dodge, and... Dodge. Do yeah, right? You say it twice? I don't know. I yeah, don't know. It, it does. That's where my head went. So I guess oh, it wasn't quite goodness. a sink. I haven't worked with y'all enough. There you go. Ted Watts. Eric Hernandez yep. throw. Yep. Junior college All-American. Yep. Big time fastball, big breaking ball. He'll go against Carson Dorsey for Florida State. First pitch to Ferrer. Misses 1-0 and oh from Chestnut. Both of those pitchers coming off outstanding performances. Hernandez solid at Duke last weekend. Dorsey solid for the Knowles at Boston College. And what was his first career start, by the way, in Tallahassee for Carson Dorsey? And it was a good one. Noel's hoping that that'll be for the sweep. Miami trying to hold things here at 11 7, give themselves a shot to make tomorrow a rubber match. On the ground, Cuvet going to go to first. Long throw across. Well, that is easy arm strength. There from Cuvay. That's impressive right there. Not just at the plate, he's showing it to you in the field. That's the second backhanded play he's had. It just makes it look really easy. He does a nice little glove work too on the short hop on the third bounce. Throwing across the diamond pretty seamlessly. He's very physical though. Look at his height alone, 6'3". Yeah, he's got a good build. He's gonna put probably more weight on too than he's only a freshman. The strength, the power that he's had. Yep. This one, right back to the mound, and Chestnut underhands it to Urso. Din just retired. Tibbs down to third. Yeah, we talk about Cuvay and how good he is at third, and Miami has been blessed to have some unbelievable third basements. And when I played, it was Pat Burrell, you know, Pat the Bat. So, I mean, you talk about Danny Dingers, when you have Pat the Bat. So, I mean, they, yeah. they got the names for their third basemen. But Burrell was one of the best college hitters I've ever seen. And just raw power. That's J.D. Arteaga. About the comparison to Yandy Morales, Yo-Yo. Mm -hmm. And he said he sees it. They're yeah. a little bit different, he said. But he does believe that, at least early on, some similarities at the plate, easy power, the frame. Miami's got a star in the making, if not already there and not already arrived in Cuvay. His two home runs here tonight have given Miami a shot. Unfortunately for the Canes, Florida State's offense continues to just absolutely rip the cover off the baseball. Best scoring offense in the ACC are the Knowles. Team batting average over 330. Only Virginia in the ACC has a higher average. You talk about complete teams. Florida State, the lowest team ERA on the pitching side of things in the league. Duke is second. That makes you tough to beat when you're the best hitting team and got the best pitchers. <laughs> Holbrook watches a ball. Count evens at two and two now with two down. Holbrook, his single in the third. His only hit of the night, but he did have an RBI ground out in the sixth. Breaking ball off the end of the bat. Foul. It'll be interesting to see tomorrow what Florida State does, either Holbrook or back to Jackson West. With the lefty, Hernandez getting the start. On the ground. Jimenez to Urso. And the Seminoles 
Connor Holtz, the lefty with the big breaking ball. That's an understatement there. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to see one with spin rate better in probably college, all of college baseball. Heck, in a lot of pro baseball. Dorian Gonzalez, Lorenzo Carrier, Jack Scanlon. That's a good one there. Didn't get the call. Four, five, six, do up here for Miami. They need three outs to keep, excuse me, four runs to keep this game alive. Knowles need three outs to shut it down. Ah, breaking ball. Man. <laughs> I mean, that thing's disgusting. They like, clocked him at 3,300 RPMs last night. Which is, I mean, that one right there, 3,135. I mean, big league's 20, a little over 2,700. On the ground. And one down. Gonzalez grounds out. Knowles now two outs away from claiming the series. Pretty cool camera angle right here. It's one of the photographer's view of the pitchers. There's Ken Lanis. And been a photographer for years for Florida State Baseball. Mm. Right back to it. And I'll tell you what, you know, when the season first started, the first few outings for Connor Holtz, the breaking ball wasn't consistent, bouncing it up there. That one, 31-67. And, man, he has really started to find his groove his last few outings. And it hadn't just been just with that breaking ball either. It's been with the fastball command as well. Holtz really over the last two weeks. 32. Has come on for Florida State and giving them another lefty option out of the pen. Breaking ball on the ground. Slotis, two down. And a seminal bullpen and a seminal pitching staff who needs everyone to step up. That was the case and the story here tonight. Brady Lout got the start. Knowles turned to Brennan Oxford to really shut things down. Joe Charles and a number of Florida State arms. A Johnny Holstaff approach here to game two. And Miami going to go to a pinch hitter. 55. Looks like Gabby Gutierrez. Seminole fans come to their feet. Over 6,000 here at Hauser for game two. Catches the zone. And one and one. I mean, you're the, we talk about it, Alex, about going right at the guys. Well, it's funny how we got a guy like Connor Holtz. He is going right at the guys. This is his pitch. He knows when he comes out of the pen, I got to be able to throw this breaking ball for a strike. All back to it. And it's one and two. And it has been a steady diet of just hammer, hammer, hammer. And pitch efficiency is going to be one of the most important factors to try to extend that longevity here, too. Never know when you might see Holtz again. Could see him again tomorrow. That's right. One-two pitch. Swing and a miss. And after the Canes swept the Noles one season ago, Florida State gets its payback.